Greetings, friends. My name is Cooley, and I'd like to show you how you can cheaply and easily make parabolic reflective cookers, like this one here. I envision these cookers being made in villages worldwide. This would reduce deforestation for firewood in undeveloped countries and oil consumption in the developed countries. I chose to use durable materials because it's part of the sustainability technology program here at the Lost Valley Education Center where they teach permaculture courses. Lost Valley Education Center is an aspiring eco-village south of Eugene, Oregon. The principle is simple. We have a mold. We cover it with a structural material, in this case, ferro cement. We pop it off. We put some reflective material on it, and we're done. So experiment using your own materials and have fun. For my dish material, I chose ferro cement. It's readily available, durable, and cheap. You can use any material that can construct a self-supporting dish, each with trade-offs for speed, durability, and cost. Experiment. Ferro cement lends itself to easy shaping and thin constructions, such as boat hulls for large yachts. Durable stuff. Ferro cement is made by applying a wet mixture of Portland cement and sand over steel reinforcing mesh, such as chicken wire, as seen here in some test samples. I use two layers of chicken wire here in my half inch thick shell of cement sand mix. As a general rule, prototype, then test materials and techniques from different portions of your projects. We need a method to prevent the cement from sticking to our mold. For my mold release material, I chose to use a film of grease or Vaseline. You could also use other greases or a thin sheet of plastic. Be sure what you use will work. An unmovable shell might spoil your day. I successfully used approximately four ounces of grease over my mold. For reinforcing mesh, I applied two layers of chicken wire, pulling it tight and securing it to the wire along the perimeter base ring. I tightened down areas of loose mesh by twisting kinks into the mesh with pliers. In order to clearly define the edge of my dish, I installed some stiff 3 8 inch plastic tubing underneath the mesh along the perimeter of my mold. For handles on the dish, I wrapped some quarter inch hardware cloth mesh around a small section of pipe with the mesh fanning out with feet that I embedded in the ferro cement, as you see here. Similarly, I installed some plates with through bolts, covered them with mesh and embedded it into the ferro cement. I installed a pipe flange in the middle of the mold to support extra mounting hardware later on. To protect the threads on the flange, I installed a short section of pipe coated with tape for easy removal. With the mesh installed and the handles ready, we're ready to apply the cement sand mix. To mix the ferro cement, use one part Portland cement with three parts of clean sand. Calculate the volume of material needed for a half inch thick shell. The total volume for my dish was about one and a half cubic feet. Be sure you complete the ferro cement application in one session. Wet loose cement sticks better to wet loose cement than to previously set cement. I hand mix batches using enough water to make a thin workable consistency, but still thick enough to leave a small trough in the surface of the batch when drawing my mixing tool through the mix. This is the easy part. Trowel it on, spreading it out to about 3 eighths of an inch or so. Work it firmly through the mesh with a vigorous jiggling motion to remove any air bubbles near the surface of the mold. Install any handles or hardware by working them into the surface with additional mesh and ferro cement over the area. Apply ferro cement down to and a bit past the perimeter tubing. We will trim it off later. Smooth it off and mark your initials for posterity. It is very important to cure cement products adequately. Cement sets strong as it reacts with water, not by drying out. Keep it wet for at least three full days. A few additional days will assure maximum strength. Keep the ferro cement wet and covered with a plastic sheet. After the initial set, I added a soaked cotton sheet underneath to help keep it wet. To free up the dish, I made a clean break in the cement along the edge defined by the plastic tubing using a masonry chisel and wire cutters. Then. Four of us jiggled it loose and lifted it off the mold and turned it over to inspect the inside of the dish. I sanded down the surface of the dish, smoothing out a few high spots as well as removing any residual grease deposited by the mold. I cleaned up any pits and gaps on the surface using a fast setting latex fortified Portland cement patch product, sanding lightly before it set completely. The result was a very smooth surface. For my first prototype, I wanted to experiment with inexpensive materials, so I used a roll of heavy duty aluminum foil. To apply the foil, 
I first marked a radial line on the dish to register the piece. Then I cut sections of foil with a simple jig, glued up the dish sector, and pressed down the foil. I completed the foil installation late afternoon and was excited to try it out before the sun disappeared behind the trees. I secured a simple A-frame under the dish and we lifted it up to face the sun. With the sun low in the sky, less than 15 degrees above the horizon, I held an old straw broom in the focus. It started to smolder, smoke, and then burst into flames. And we got fire. This is what oil independence looks like.